सहिता गधाधार गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे we continue reading from shrimad bhagavatam we are on canto 4 chapter 1 text 26 and 27 we have been hearing the austerities of atri muni and anasuya and um atri muni and anasuya and atri muni was doing great austerity standing on one leg and there was fire coming from his head and so because of his great austerities lord vishnu lord brahma lord shiva all three of them came on their carriers um along with the gandharvas the apsaras the vidyadharas you know the, the the higher beings chetas tat pravanam yunjan astavit sama patanjali hi shlaks naya sukta ya vacha sarva loka gari yasah atir uvaj atrir uvaj विश्वोद्भवस्थिति लयेशु विजभयुगम विग्रहिता देह ते ब्रह्मा विष्णु गिरीशा प्रणात अस्मि अहम वस् ते व्यक्वता मा इहो बहुत यू नो सम ऑफ द डिवोटीज रिसाइड सो ब्यूटिफुल द भागवतम वर्सेस if any one of you all want to learn i mean it's so beautiful and then you all can recite you know in that meter translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swamishla prabhupad but since his heart was already attracted by the deities somehow or the other he gathered his senses and with folded hands and sweet words he began to offer prayers to the predominating deities of the universe the great sage atri said o lord brahma lord vishnu and lord shiva you have divided yourself into three bodies by accepting the three modes of material nature as you do in every millennium for the creation maintenance and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation i offer my respectful obeisances unto all of you and beg to inquire whom of you three i have called by my prayer so atri muni didn't know who is the supreme lord and now three three lords are here so he is because he was praying to god we heard that he didn't know who is god but he knows that god is great god is the creator he is the maintainer he is the one who dissolves everything so he he knew that god exists the supreme lord exists but he doesn't know who is the lord so he's asking them now please tell me who did i pray to so lord brahma lord vishnu and lord shiva does anyone remember what were their carriers and what they were holding lord brahma carrier is hansa and he was holding the kusha grass lord shiva's carrier is bel and he was holding the damaru and lord vishnu's carrier is garud and he was holding the chakra sudarshan chakra and thank you and they are in charge of the three modes of nature and who is in charge of what and what is their function brahma ji is in charge of passion igno uh, the mode of passion and mode of passion makes you do things you want to do things activity in that then the mode of uh, ignorance is lord shiva and in that you feel very very lazy you don't want to do things at all or you want to do in a wrong time always at wrong time in a wrong way and darkness and actually it is also called darkness ignorance and then the mode of goodness is uh, lord vishnu and in that you can do devotional service and you are at higher than all these two and you can do that things that that are pleasing and then it turns into vishuddha sattva mm, that's right we at least have to come to the mode of goodness so that we can transcend the modes devotional service of course is transcendental 
we may be in the modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance, but devotional service is not in the mode of goodness. It's transcendental, spiritual. We may uh, do our chanting and hearing in the modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance because we are in the modes. So the modes are there so much in the world. The, in, the, 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 we are so entangled in the modes, the way we speak, the way we eat, the, how we live, how we do any activity, our desires. Everything is influenced by the modes. So we are not able to understand how to get out of the modes. And how to get out of the modes? By devotional service. We can easily cross beyond it. Krishna says, Devi hi aisha gunamai mam maya duratyaya. Mam eva ye prapadyante mayam etam tarantite. Those who surrender unto me can very easily cross beyond the modes. So Atri Rishi called for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Jagad Ishwar, the Lord of the Universe. The Lord must exist before the creation, otherwise how could he be its Lord? So this is something we need to understand, you know. Because many people think that the material energy, material universe, she is um, the supreme. No. But God is the one who has created this material nature. He is the creator. So he existed before the creation. If someone constructs a big building, this indicates that he must have existed before the building was constructed. Therefore, the Supreme Lord, the creator of the universe, must be transcendental to the material modes of nature. We were just now speaking about the modes of nature. Everyone in this material world is entangled by the modes of nature, but not Krishna. Krishna is not entangled by modes of nature. Why? Because he's God. He's the one who's creating the modes. He exists first and then he creates the modes. And Prabhupada is giving the example that the, art, the constructor is there and then he builds the building. It's not that the building makes the constructor. No, the building is just dead matter. Material energy, she has no capacity to create. All the creation that's happening is because the living entity is there, because the Lord is putting the living entity inside. So it's, that is the living touch, not matter. Therefore, the Supreme Lord, the creator of the universe, must be transcend. Ah, yeah. But it is known that Vishnu takes charge of the mode of goodness, Brahma takes charge of the mode of passion, and Lord Shiva takes the charge of the mode of goodness, ignorance. Therefore, Atri Muni said that Jagat Ishwar, the Lord of the universe, must be one of you. But since three of you have appeared, I cannot recognize whom I have called. You are all so kind. Please let me know who is actually Jagat Ishwar, the Lord of the universe. Jagat Ishwar, Lord of the universe. So Atri Muni here, he's showing a humility. You know, instead of imagining something or assuming something, he is humbly putting this question. And so we should follow in this footstep. When we have doubts, we should humbly put the question forth to the authority, to the authority, someone who can give us the correct answer. Instead of imagining who is God, or in, instead of assuming there is no God, we simply humbly inquire. And here Atri Muni is humbly inquiring. He's not ashamed, oh, I don't know. He's not being puffed up in the false ego. Oh, no, no, they will laugh at me, or oh, I don't know. No, humbly he's saying, who is it actually? In fact, Atri Rishi was doubtful about the constitutional position of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. But he was quite certain that the Lord of the universe cannot be one of the creatures created by Maya. His very inquiry about whom he had called indicates that he was in doubt about the constitutional position of the Lord. So the tattva, understanding the tattva of the Lord is important. Therefore, he prayed to all three, kindly let me know who is the transcendental Lord of the universe. 
we were certain, of course, that not all of them could be the Lord, but that the Lord of the universe was one of the three. So why all three cannot be the Lord? Because why there's only one, be? but there's only one God, one Lord, Supreme Lord. Yes, thank you. Yes, the source always has to be one. Can't be if if we say, oh, there are so many sources. No, but then again, if we do further inquiry, we will come to one. God is only one. God is there is no one greater than or equal to God. So, reading on twenty-eight, Eko Mayeha Bhagavan Viveda Pradhan is Chiti Krita Prajna Nanaya Katham No Yuyam. I call for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, desiring a son like him. And I thought of him only. But although he is far beyond the mental speculation of man, all three of you have come here. Kindly let me know how you have come, for I am greatly bewildered about this. Atri Muni was confidently aware that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Lord of the universe. So he prayed for the one Supreme Lord. He was surprised, therefore, that three of them appeared. So Atri Muni understands the position of God. He understands that there is only one God. God cannot be many, just as Sneha rightly said to us. <clears throat> And he understands that God is a person. That's why he's saying desiring a son like him. So although he doesn't know who is God, he knew that God is a person. Otherwise, why does, how can he want a son like him? You know, something to think about. If we, if we think that God is energy, then how we are praying, oh God, you give me protection. You know, we are talking to him. We are speaking to someone. We don't speak to some light, you know, to the bulb. Do we speak? We don't. We don't pray to the light bulb. Why? Because we know it's useless. Nothing's going to happen. But we pray to God because we know that he's a person. That's the reason we pray to him. It's just we don't want to accept it many times. And then we get covered up in a lot of um, misinterpretation. So reading on. Maitreya Vacha. Would somebody like to read this? I can try. Maitre Uvacha Iti Tasya Vacha Shrutva Shreste Vibhurudhar Shaba Pratyahu Shranakshaya Vacha Prahasya Tramashi Prabhu The great sage Maitreya continued upon hearing Atri Muni speak in that way. The three great deities smiled and they replied in the following sweet words. 4.30. Anyone? Okay, I'll try. Deva uchu yatha kritaste sankalpo bhavyam bhavyam te neva nan yatha sat sankalpasya te brahman yat very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. The three deities told Atri Muni, dear Brahmana, you are perfect in your determination. And therefore, as you have decided, so it will happen. It will not happen otherwise. We are all the same person upon you whom you were meditating. And therefore, we have all come to you. How? What's happening? We just said God is one. Now they all are saying we are the same person whom you're meditating. Therefore, we all have come to you. Let's read on. Atri Muni unspecifically thought of the, of the personality of Godhead, the Lord of the universe. Although he had no clear idea of the Lord of the universe, nor of his specific form. So Atri Muni didn't know how does God look like, but he knows he is the Lord, Jagannath, Lord of the universe, Jagannath. 
but he doesn't know who, who, how he looks like. Mahavishnu, from whom, who's breathing millions of universes emanate, and to whom, and into whom they are again withdrawn, may be accepted as the Lord of the universe. Garbhodakshai Vishnu, from whose abdomen sprouted the lotus flower, which is the birthplace of Brahma, may also be considered the Lord of the universe. Similarly, Shirodakashai Vishnu, who is the super soul of all living entities, may also be considered the Lord of the universe. Then, under the order of Shirodakshai Vishnu, the Vishnu form within this universe, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva may also be accepted as the lords of the universe. So the creation happens. How? All the universes are coming from the pores of the body of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu, he is lying in the Karana ocean, causal ocean, and millions and millions of universes are coming from his body. So because the millions of universes are coming from him, we can call him Lord of the Universe. Then again, he is entering as Garbhodakshai Vishnu inside every universe. So we can call Garbhodakshai Vishnu Lord of the Universe. Then again, he is entering into every atom of the universe, every in the heart of every living entity as Shirodakshai Vishnu. So we can call him Lord of the Universe. And we need to understand that these three Purusha avatars, they are one personality. They're not different personalities. It's very inconceivable for us to understand how, how can we, we, we say, oh, one person and they are two, three people, so they are different. But the Lord, no, these are his expansions. This is the Lord himself. So now from Shiro Dakshai Vishnu, Shiro Dakshai Vishnu, he is the super soul. All the incarnations come from him. All the incarnations come from him. So here, Shla Prabhupada is saying that Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva may also be accepted as the lords of the universe. So um, Lord Brahma, he is the most, uh, he's the original person of the universe. He's the one who has the maximum power in the universe because he's the one who's doing the secondary creation. Lord Brahma sometimes is the uh, incarnation of Krishna, but mostly he is a living entity. And he is a guna avatar. He is a guna avatar of the Lord. So that's the reason he can be called Lord of the Universe. Similarly, Lord Shiva is also a guna avatar. He is the, he's called Maheshwar. Lord Shiva is called Maheshwar, the Lord of the Universe. And uh, so they may be called as lords of the universe too, because they're ruling the universe. Vishnu is the lord of the universe because he is its maintainer. Similarly, Brahma creates the different planetary systems and the population. So he also may be considered the lord of the universe or Lord Shiva, who is ultimately the destroyer of the universe, also may be considered its lord. Therefore, since Atri Muni did not specifically mention whom he wanted, all three, Brahma, Vishnu, and Lord Shiva came before him. They said, since you are thinking of having a son, exactly like the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord of the universe, your determination will be fulfilled. So Atri Muni, he is um, praying to the Lord in the mood He's addressing the Lord as the Lord of the universe. That's his mood. And that's the reason all three of them have come, because all three could be called Lord of the universe. So even I'm trying to understand this, that um, the mood, you know, how if suppose we are, we are talking about Krishna, Shamsundar, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then yeah, yeah, sure, he's the Lord of the universe, but, oh, wow, he has this amazing pastimes in Golok Vrindavan and he has, you know, his loving devotees and his pastimes. So Atri, is, Atri Muni is not thinking like that. He's thinking of the, the Supreme Lord that 
his function is that he's the Lord of the universe. And so that's the reason all three of them came. In other words, one's determination is fulfilled according to the strength of one's devotion. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan Pitrin Yanti Pitra Prataha. This is chapter 9, text 25. What, uh, who do we worship? We will go there. Krishna says that. You worship the demigods, you will go to the planet of the demigods, you worship the uh, the ghosts, you will take birth among the ghosts, you worship the ancestors, you will be born in the planet of the ancestors. But if you worship me, you will come to me. So if one is attached to a particular demigod, one is promoted to the abode of that demigod. If one is attached to the pitas or forefathers, one is promoted to their planet. And similarly, if one is attached to the supreme personality of Godhead Krishna, one is promoted to the abode of Lord Krishna. Atri Muni had no clear conception of the Lord of the universe. Therefore, the three presiding deities who are actually the lords of the universe in the three departments of the modes of nature all came before him. Now, according to the strength of his determination for a son, his desire would be fulfilled by the grace of the Lord. So Atri Muni, he was, um, he didn't know who is the Lord, but he knew, okay, there is a Lord of the universe. And Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, we say the Lords of um, goodness, passion, and ignorance. So all three of them have come. So depending on our devotion, Krishna says that one's determination is fulfilled according to strength of one's devotion. Who we worship, that will be our destination. Where do we want to go? If we want to go to the, to the moon planet, we worship the moon god. We want to go to the sun planet. We worship the sun god. We want to go to Golok Vrindavan, to the highest planet in the spiritual world. We worship Krishna. This is what Krishna is saying. Did anyone want to add or comment? Or anything? So the all three appeared because Atri Muni was not sure, right? Yeah, because he's calling as Lord of the universe. So now they all three are saying, okay, I'm the Lord of goodness. One is saying I'm Lord of passion, Lord of... Anyway, but we have to understand that we heard in the earlier verse yesterday that the Paramatma told Brahma and Shiva, you also come. Mm -hmm. You know, so everything happens by the will of the Supreme Lord. And then the, the Supreme Lord's Krishna's will is, 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 the, is the one that how the pastime unveils itself. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise Lord Jagannath would have come. But then Atri mm -hmm. Muni didn't know who's Lord Jagannath. Yeah, he's called Jagdishwar, right? Yeah, Lord Jagannath, he's the Lord of the universe. Yeah. So, but now let's see how the pastime unfolds. So Krishna's will. Is that okay? Why are we entangled by the modes of nature? Why did Krishna create this? I know, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is because we have a desire. It's all <coughs> we, we have this desire to enjoy the material world. And we have the desire to imitate that I am the enjoyer. Because we are actually the prakriti. We are actually energy of Krishna. But we have this desire that I want to be the enjoyer. So we can't do that in the spiritual world. So Krishna creates this material world by which we start actually believing that, yes, I am the enjoyer. I am the proprietor. I am the best friend of everyone. We start believing it. This is all is because of this. 
maya potency, the modes of nature. And she rules us by these modes of nature. That's how she rules us. And we get entangled. And we get so entangled, life after life after life after life, so entangled, we don't know how to get out of there. That's what the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita says, right? Purushottam Yoga. So we have to get out of this entanglement by devotional service. We can easily come out of it by hearing about Krishna, by chanting Krishna's name. Then we can rise above the modes. Is that okay? There's no other way that we can come out of the modes. It's by devotional service. So it's due to desires. That's why. Desires. Yes. Yeah. Krishna says yeah. in Bhagavad Gita chapter 7, our desire to be uh, like him and our envy of him. Why is Krishna God? Why am I not God? So these two defects we have. And we are given a birth in this material world to help us rectify this defect. We are given a chance to yeah, rectify, give up this desire. Once we give up this two desire, we go back home, back to Godhead. Our desire so to be God. Envy, yeah? envy, envy. And then our envy, desire yeah? to be. To be. That I want like, to be God. That's oh, our oh. desire. Mm. I want to be God. That's our desire. And why is Krishna God? Why am I mm. not God? So we are envious of him. Mm. So for this two, uh, basically these two desires that we are here, our desire and our envy. So that's why the modes of nature is created. Yes. The modes of nature are created and that's how they control us. We are thinking we are controlling. Mm -hmm. Because Krishna, you see, we are the prakriti, you know? so we can never be independent. We are always under the control. So either we are under control of the spiritual energy or material energy. But now we have told Krishna, I don't want to be in your spiritual energy. I want to be God myself. So then we are controlled by the material energy. And how does she control us? By these three moods, goodness, passion, and ignorance. They control us, how we speak, how we eat, where we go, what kind of recreation we like. Uh, then uh, how we sleep, how many hours we sleep, what are we eating, everything, everything is controlled by the moods and we think we are independent. But the basic, of course, desire is there. So we might say, ah, I'm not doing anything. I go murder someone or oh, it's my moods that made me do it. But again, we'll come back to our desire. It's our desire. So that's the reason the modes act in that way on us. Is that okay? Yes. yes. And the only way we can correct that desire, the more we hear, the more we chant, then our heart will get purified. We will understand our true position, Krishna's true position. Then once we understand, then automatically that uh, illicit desire is not going to be there anymore. Yeah. So finally, everything sums up to hearing and chanting. If that, yes. is, that is the most important thing. Devotional. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Continue hearing and chanting. That's all we need to do. Continue to hear and chant. And go back home, back to Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri ki jai, Gaur Bhakti Vindri ki jai, Hare Krishna. Sorry, it's become a little over time today.